Again, you are welcome to today's uh, Christ Disciples Fellowship with Christ servant uh, Moses Ayoketa. Let us pray. Eternal Father, Eternal King of Glory, Ancient of Deeds, the I am that I am. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity at this moment that you have gathered us again together through this platform. I thank you for your children connected to the program so far in different parts of our world. And I thank you for those that are still to do so. Holy Father, by your spirit, we commit into your hand this program and ask you to take total control. Holy Spirit, Father, use me again and minister through me that your people be blessed. Let your word come forth and manifest through me to everyone that will listen with wisdom and power for salvation, healing, deliverance, and transformation for good in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal Father, I thank you that you who is establishing us to be strong in you by your wisdom will continue to perfect the work you have begun in our life. Therefore, I ask you by your spirit and by the blood of Jesus to cover for us this program and let the internet and the entire technology involved be completely protected, supervised by you, even through your spirit and your angels. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Father, <coughs> for answered prayers. Even as we have prayed in agreement, take control of us. And I ask you, by your mercy, to forgive us of all our wrongdoings and whatever may stand between us and the blessing you have for us today. Father, by your mercy and the blood of Jesus, forgive us and take them away in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that every ear that hear will listen and understand. Therefore, by your spirit, anoint every heart to be receptive to your words in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' almighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to today's Christ Disciples Fellowship. You are welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to uh, begin to flow in the series of what I explained to all the other time under the caption, Foundational Wisdom Blocks. So today we will be having foundational wisdom block number one. Praise the Lord. So I will plead that if you are having noise in your background, please you can put your device in the mute position so that your feedback doesn't disturb and interrupt the program. So today, as you must have received from the text sent to you on the Christ Disciple book, our caption of today is Foundational Wisdom Block Number One. And there are a series of scriptures that I put there which you should have had a reflection of if you went through. So we are going to be looking at the lesson that our Lord Jesus Christ expects us to learn in relation to what he knows as a primary need for his followers or his disciples or believers. Praise the living God. So, first, we shall be looking at 
what Christ established for us in Matthew chapter 5. From verse 2 to verse 12. And to identify the first wisdom block that we need to have a solid foundation in Christ and in this life to overcome the challenges and all that comes against us on a daily basis. Taking into consideration that what Christ has said for us, the foundational wisdom block number one is the caption rejoice always rejoice always so we are going to see how is rejoicing become a foundational wisdom block first of all we have to take note of everything that I'm presenting to us is directly from Christ. So I'm only serving as one that he has sent as his servant and as a messenger of Jehovah God, privilege his prophet and apostle to this generation. So there's nothing that I'm actually establishing this teaching on which has to do with me or man except that which is directly established for us by Christ. So I'm bringing that to us and helping us to understand certain aspects and by the grace of God, uh, if time permits, I'll give room for us to interact with some questions if people have questions to ask. So now the background to this is that as we will be looking at to establish the foundational wisdom block number one, which is rejoice always. We have to understand that the foundational wisdom block series is based from the establishment of Christ's statement in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24 to the last verse. So before we go to read Matthew chapter 5, from verse 2 to 12 to establish that foundational wisdom block which is rejoice always. Let us first of all listen to Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Now uh, Joshua is here with me, we thank God and I will be having him to help me doing some of the reading. So let us get the first reading, which is the establishment of the need to study and observe this wisdom block, which I, by the inspiration of the Spirit, call foundational wisdom block, because they are actually the wisdom of Christ given to us as the knowledge we need to have a solid foundation to overcome the challenges or troubles that comes against human beings on a daily basis. If you must withstand them and move forward to fulfill purpose as God has ordained, then you must take serious this lesson and have God by his grace in prayer to begin to apply them or observe and obey them in full as demanded by our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So let us get the first reading for today, which is Matthew chapter 7. We're going to hear verse 24 and 25. Or let us have read just to get a holistic picture. Matthew chapter 4, verse 24 to sorry, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to verse 27. Now let us get the reading. Read. <coughs> Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. It did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be 
be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell in great of its fall. Praise the living God. So in my previous teachings and program, I have explained to us what is the meaning or the symbolism of those words. The rain, the flood, and the wind. These are three symbols representing all the challenges that comes against human beings on a daily basis. And Christ is telling us that in order to withstand these challenges and not fall, the not fall there will mean not fail in life, and it could also go to an extension not being eliminated or dying prematurely untimely. These sayings that he has established must be obeyed. So verse 24 is telling us we have to obey these sayings, generally his sayings, but specifically in the context he was speaking, he said these sayings, which means there are identified instructions he has given of what, if somebody wants to overcome the challenges of life, must obey them. And so it is these sayings, which is the wisdom he has established, which I call the foundational wisdom block. Those sayings, he said this, and now we analyze and I explain that the sayings he was talking as this, they were clearly available, identified. What were the sayings? It was the sayings of what he started teaching as established by his wisdom and principle from Matthew chapter 5. Because he was concluding that teaching from Matthew chapter 5, he was concluding it in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24. That's why the verse 24 started with the word therefore. And knowing fully well, therefore, when you use the word therefore, you are concluding the previous thoughts. So it is there now we now go back as, as directed by the Holy Spirit to now begin to look at every instruction he gave from Matthew chapter 5 where he started the discourse. So if we go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 1, we will understand that he's telling us that he now was on the mount, supposed mount of olives, began the lesson or the teachings. And he concluded the teachings after chapter 7 of Matthew. And Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 tells us that he now came down from the mountain. So we know everything that is established from Matthew chapter 5, from verse 2 downward, until conclusively in chapter 7, the last verse, where all the lessons he was teaching in that one moment, which is called sometimes the sermons at the mount. Hallelujah. And as we know, the Bible originally was not written in chapters or verses. So when we now have chapters and verses separating some of these aspects of thought, it doesn't mean that they were separately taught. So the whole block of everything we have in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 2 right to the last verse of chapter 7 are uh, all together in that lesson known as the sermons at the mount and it is from there the sayings he is referring to all what he has taught there which he said the doing of these sayings the doing of those instructions of what he asks us to do is the key and the power is the foundation and the strength to keep anyone withstand the challenges that comes against human being in life which are symbolized as rain, flood, and wind. And I explained also in the past lessons that he uses two examples of a man that is considered wise, who is the one doing his sayings, obeying and keeping his instruction. That's the one which will not be brought down by the challenges of life. 
and the other man who is considered foolish, irrespective of educational qualification and titles, is the man who is not going to or will not do his saying, will not obey his instruction, and that one must be brought down by the challenges of life, and ultimately may even end up his life prematurely, which I pray that should not be your portion in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, but it is important to take note that from our Lord Jesus Christ, it shows that every human being on earth is facing the same kind of challenges. Both the man which succeeds to withstand and fulfill purpose and destiny, and the man who fails, all of them are faced by the rain, the flood, and the wind, which is to say, Nobody should sit and think that his own case is special. He is the only one having all these problems. No, Christ says every human being is subjected to the challenges of life. They say, but why is it that one who will stand and succeed and feel fulfilled in life, fulfilling the purpose of his God until at the end of his journey, he will receive well done, good and faithful servant from his Lord and Savior. And when another one will fail, and even the end of his life prematurely on earth. The reason the difference between the two is that one is building on the solid rock. And what does that mean? Building on solid rock. Obeying these sayings, his instructions. And the other one is refusing to obey. So now the implication is, if you hear and does not do, you are the same like the person who also has not been heard. Because the end product of the victory is that you do. And it's very, very sad for us who are supposed to be called children of God or followers of Christ, who have the opportunity to hear a lot of Christ's sayings, and yet we do not take them serious to do them. We are worst in frustration because we already have the opportunity to succeed by, first of all, having access to know, compared to the people who do not even have access to know, like unbelievers. But it's unfortunate that sometimes even those of us who are here will end up to be hearers and not doers. I pray and I release upon you the spirit of grace and supplication with the ability to be disciplined to do every instruction of God, particularly that of Christ, which you are aware and you are not doing. May the Lord grant you the grace to begin to do even from now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now let us now get the reading from Matthew chapter Five. We're going to see from verse 2 to verse 12. But let us first of all get the verse 12 read. Because the verse 12 is that establishment of the wisdom of Christ. Of the foundational wisdom block number one. Which is rejoice always. Christ is expecting us to be rejoicing always. And I will explain to us why. And how that is a pillar among the things that will keep us to withstand the challenges of life. Read now for us Matthew chapter 5, read first verse 12, or just read verse 10 to 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those, Christ says, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, yes? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Continue. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Now, it means when people insult you and persecute you for what? Continue. And say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. So Christ says when people insult you and they say even all kinds of evil against you falsely, they tell lies against you, they do evil against you for his sake. He said you are blessed. Now that sounds not human. How can you tell me that people, when people insult me, when people say all kind of evils against me, conspiracy and all plans, yet you, the Lord Jesus, you are saying, I am blessed? That will tell you that he's speaking from a different realm of consciousness outside the realm of human consciousness. Because in human consciousness, ah, somebody just said something bad against you. You can't say that's blessing. You must go after the person. Because that's not a blessing for you. But Christ is saying, all those people who have been saying things against you, insulting you, saying falsely, even evil. He said you are blessed. 
Now, what does that suggest to you already? It means when you now fight back those people, you are instead throwing away your blessing. And I can see many of you nodding your head now, already seeing a lot of blessings you have thrown by the negative response you gave back against the people who were doing these things against you. He said, if people insult you, if people abuse you, if people even say falsely evil things against you like they did to Joseph, for his sake, you are blessed. Now, I want to take note, I want us to take note here, the emphasis there is when they do those things against you for Christ's sake, not for the sake of you going to cause your trouble. Because there are situations where people will insult people, they will say falsely and create problem to them because the people went and created the trouble. That's not what Christ is saying here. It's talking in the case where people insult you, they say all kinds of evil things against you falsely, but for his sake, that's when you are blessed. What that suggests to me is that you are doing what God is leading you to do. The sake of Christ, for Christ's sake. Who is Christ? Christ is the word of God. You are doing what stands according to the word. What is Christ? And who is Christ? Is the truth. That's the central, central aspect of it to every human being. Whenever you stand on the truth in whatever you are doing which is truthful, and which is the case most of the time, you will discover that people who are not truthful, people who are evil and dark, they must oppose and challenge you when you are standing on the truth. That's the meaning for his sake. Because he is the truth. So it's not, for his sake doesn't only mean religiously. We also know that, it, we understand that it means mostly when you are preaching about Jesus. No, that's not where it, it doesn't end there. It doesn't mean any aspect of life. When you stand for the truth, whether in your job place, whether in politics, whether in business, whether in your marketplace, whether in the family, whenever you stand for the truth, that is Christ. Because Christ is the truth. Yet, you have people insulting you because of that truth you stand for. You have people even go and conspire and say things and plot evil against you. That is the same for his sake. So, we should now see it on a general basis, outside just the limitation of the Christian perspective of it. We know the religious perspective is true there also. When you are preaching about Christ, you have sometimes people who insult you and say that. That's what we knew before. But now, I'm telling you, the picture of my say Christ is beyond just the religious perspective of Christianity, but to the holistic general view as the truth. So whenever you stand from the truth, Christ is saying, there will be people, because when light is to enter a place, darkness is doing everything for light not to come, because darkness knows when light enter there, is relevant, is lost. And light is the truth. Light is the word of God and is the foundational aspect of the word of God is the teachings of Christ. And in the teachings of Christ, the foundational aspect of that teaching is these sayings he has told us. Don't start from Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7. And the other scriptures like John, the other books like John and Luke support all these teachings. But Matthew is the one that has the more arranged from Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7. Hallelujah. So you now understand, he has told us that we are blessed. But now, the blessing will never work for you if you don't do the instruction he gave, which is the foundational wisdom block number one. Continue the reading now. Matthew chapter 5, go now to verse 11 and 12. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Continue. And say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. And say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. The Lord Jesus is speaking. Verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Now, that's an instruction. What is the instruction? Rejoice. And be what? Exceedingly glad. So that by the Holy Spirit, it is now revealed to us as I present to you foundational wisdom block is to rejoice always especially when people cause you trouble they insult you they revile or say all kind of evil things against you that blessing christ says you are blessed when they do that 
and because you are standing on the truth, that's different again as for the one you create trouble. That one you create trouble, you must ask for mercy for God to help you overcome it. This one, you are not doing anything wrong, which is where the problems are most times. You are doing your best, doing your good. You create nobody any problem, but somebody somewhere is telling lies against you. Somebody somewhere is fighting against you because of that truth you are standing on and even going after certain false conspiracy even with evil and coming even attacks that's part of where witchcraft attacks are on people christ says don't respond and react against them humanly do what rejoice foundational wisdom block number one is to rejoice always hallelujah those things people do as he described there in the matthew chapter 10 as well as I mean, chapter 5, verse 10 and verse 11, those things he's described there are the same as the rain, the flood. But now, you will be able to withstand if you do what he has instructed. And they now will tend to a blessing. If you fail to do the instruction he gave, these sayings of mine, if you fail to do what he gave, instead of that being a blessing to you, it will be the curse to bring you down as the foolish man. You got to remember the foolish, according to Christ's description, has nothing to do with whether you are literate or illiterate. It has to do with whether you are obeying these sayings he has given or you are not obeying them. And when Christ defines something, that is the final authority above all authority as the truth. So Christ's definition of a wise man is the man who is doing his sayings, a man who is obeying his instruction. And his definition of a foolish man is a man who is not obeying his instruction. He has nothing to do with your degrees. That, why? Because these things he gave as instruction is what when we do them, we succeed in life. When we don't do, we fail. And a wise person, the conclusion of wisdom must go in manifestation of practical reality of succeeding. Outside that, you may quote whatever you quote, you may present whatever degrees and how many you have. The poor, let us see whether that is enough to give you the peace or give you the ability to be fulfilled or give you what it takes to have your life protected, your health protected, to have the money or the means you need to fulfill purpose. So the, to succeed in life is to be wise and according to Christ to be wise is to do his saying. Hallelujah. So today, in this understanding, that is foundational wisdom block number one I present to you by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from the wisdom of Christ established to us according to his, his holy teachings in the Holy Scriptures or Holy Bible. So we have seen that is to rejoice always. Why is it always? Because that is supported in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. Paul telling us what is the will of God and the number one is that analysis is first rejoice always so where is paul getting that he's gotten it, he's getting it from christ's principle which is say you are blessed now what is the meaning of rejoice or rejoicing and why is it a blessing if people do those because most times nobody have any problem to rejoice when things are going on well so there's no there's not going to be any supernatural reward that will come to you if you are rejoicing when everything is fine. So the ability to activate it as a blessing, as a reward, is when you are faced with situations like challenges, like attack, they are insulting you, saying all kind of evil things against you falsely. If you can rejoice then, then you are activating the supernatural intervention of God by the Holy Spirit to now turn that situation for your good. And that now validates Romans chapter 8, also verse 28, that says all things work together for good, but not to every Christian, not to every child of God, but to who? Those who love God and are called according to his purpose. What does that mean? Those who are truly walking in the love of God and the love of Christ and are walking in the purpose as Christ has instructed. He says, that is why he said it's a blessing. So they're rejoicing because always in life we will have situations that will come that you cannot be happy ordinarily, but you now the understanding that is a foundational wisdom block 
it will help you to overcome many things. Hallelujah. Now let's get the reading now of the Matthew chapter 5 from verse 2 until verse 10, since we have or verse 9, since we already read verse 10, 11, and 12. Then he opened his mother's talk and saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven. So verse verse 2, Christ said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is what? The kingdom. So first, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, that part doesn't have any instruction, but it's trying to tell you if you have that kind of condition in your spirit, because the poor in spirit that means it's somebody who is teachable. You acknowledge that you lack. You need to learn. You are not filled enough spiritually. So you are always able to acknowledge that you are spiritually empty. You need, so you will be teachable. You will be ready to learn from God directly by His Spirit and indirectly through His vessels and materials. Then you are blessed because you are acknowledging your position in need. But that, that is a state. It doesn't carry in it an instruction of what you must do, but you need to be of that state. So continue on verse 3. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Those who mourn, for so they shall be comforted. So you are still blessed because in the state of what will cause you mourn, something, it has some insult, some problems, some wind, some rain. But God said you are blessed. Continue. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. The blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. That's talking about humility now. Humble spirit, which is all in the encompasses of simplicity, meekness, uh, simplicity and teachableness continue Christ says they shall inherit the earth why are they going to inherit the earth because whatever is happening within and around them God will give them victory to take control over everything even those who are bringing the trouble against them they will end up either be transformed by the spirit of God or they are eliminated and these people who are in meekness will be in charge as they Followers of Christ. Continue. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What does that suggest? It's still the same relating with the poor in spirit. If you are able to be hungry, then he said you shall be what? Feel. But the hunger here should be based on what? Righteousness, which is the same. What is righteousness? Right standing with God. What is right standing with God? Doing the right thing, what God wants you to do. What does that summarize? Doing what Christ says. You say you shall be filled. But now the picture there, that still is a state. Because naturally, biologically, you do not create hunger. Hunger is not what you cause. It is a natural thing that happens with your system. You cannot create taste, test by yourself. It happens with your system. So that is inbuilt as what your system. The same way biologically, your physical system gets to be hungry and test naturally when it's supposed to the same way spiritually when your spiritual conditions of your spirit are correct your spirit will be hungry and thirsty for righteousness and primarily in that hunger you will be filled filled with what to fit in the hunger is to be filled with the word of god knowledge to fit in the test is to be filled like test symbolize water liquid which is the spirit so these states are all states that your spirit will be to attract all the blessings by doing that foundational wisdom block number one. Hallelujah. Continue. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So that's another state which now by itself shows that there's an action that can attach to. If you show mercy, you obtain mercy. If you don't show mercy, you will not obtain mercy. Now, how are you going to show mercy? That is what the instruction in number 12 is carrying. Because to show mercy means somebody does something that by judgment is supposed to be condemned, you're supposed to retaliate, you're supposed to be annoyed with him. By doing the action of verse 12, which is the foundational wisdom block number one. It is where you now can be able to show mercy. And until you show mercy, which is part of doing that foundational wisdom block number one, you cannot obtain mercy. And if you cannot obtain mercy, 
you will not have access to the grace of God. And anybody who doesn't have access to the grace of God flowing, he will be struggling by himself. And the word of God says, not by power, not by your power, not by your strength, not by might. For by strength shall no man prevail. But it's only by his spirit. So the spirit of God cannot be activated to flow to assist us if we are not accessing his grace. And you can't access his grace if you do not obtain mercy. And you can't obtain mercy until you show mercy, which is the instruction of verse 12, which is the foundational wisdom of love. Rejoicing always will now give you the lay way to show mercy to those who have done you all this wrong. Hallelujah. Now, continue. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's also another reason. If you are not rejoicing, your heart cannot be pure. And you cannot see God. They see God there also means hear. You can't hear from God because your heart is not pure. You can't see from God. If you hear anything of the Spirit, or see anything from the Spirit, when you have not done what Christ has asked us to do, as he says, forget what you are seeing cannot be from the Holy Spirit. What you are hearing cannot be from the Holy Spirit. Because until you are doing that foundational wisdom block of rejoicing always, it will practically be impossible for your heart to be pure. But when your heart is pure, you have access to hear and see and experience God, who now will give direction and dictate to turn all things for your good. Hallelujah. Continue. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, dear people of God, we have understood the link to this foundational wisdom block number one, which is verse 12 of Matthew chapter 5, that all those things the Lord has pronounced as blessed from verse 2, blessed are these, blessed are these, those are states. You cannot be in that state of the spirit until you do this foundational wisdom block instruction, which is verse 12. Rejoice. 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 Because the issue here is not to be rejoicing or being happy when things are going well. So the summary to it, you are blessed when people say this, then that, that summary means whatever anybody does against you, the sayings of Christ, these sayings, as the first foundational wisdom block, is for you and me to do everything to be in the mood of rejoicing. The question now comes, what does it mean to be rejoicing or to rejoice? Rejoice is the same word from its origin as joy. So rejoicing is expression of joy. It means it's something you do, you emotionally express a showing of joy. Which mostly you express rejoicing by singing, by expressing work of dance, and even as well as dancing if you want to. Now this is what Christ is telling us, that when people do you all this trouble, for you to be able to access all this blessing, express joy which is rejoicing if you go to any dictionary and try to look for the meaning of the word rejoice you see in simple terms say you are expressing it the joy delight of something it must be shown it must be expressed and you see this one rejoice that's why the, the foundational wisdom block now was captured by the analysis that is expressed by Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Now read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, which says, Rejoice always, because it is to rejoice always, so that there will be no time when you will stop to be rejoicing. If you do, you will block, because you are going to be having people always in life somehow, no matter how good you do. He said they will do those things against you falsely for his sake what is his sake the truth he's the truth for his sake not only on religious terms of evangelism but his sake as the truth so anytime you really stand to do what is right and good christ is saying you must 
And so our life always is to move to stand for the truth, do the truth. So you will certainly be having people always doing what you're supposed to be annoyed. But he said, don't react if they rejoice. And rejoicing now require that you show, you express happiness. You express some words of joy, thanks, praise, singing to God. When you do that, then the blessing he said you are going to get for people doing this thing to you will be activated. Because the reason for that is that what? When you are rejoicing, your heart will be pure. And when your heart is pure, you can hear God, you can see God. And by that, God will give you instruction of what to do and turn what they are doing against you for your good. Somebody say amen. That is why that becomes a blessing. But once you don't do this instruction he has given in this saying, you, your heart is not pure. You cannot hear God. You cannot see. So there's nothing that you are going to know to do that will make the Spirit of God intervene to turn things for your good. So my prayer is that God will help us take serious this foundational wisdom block number one to be rejoicing always, no matter what they do against you. Remember I said, there's no problem for you to rejoice when people do you good. The emphasis of this teaching on that foundational block from Christ is that it is when they do you wrong, which is summarized in that picture. They insult you as one of the things people do against people. They go even as far as saying false things against you, make conspiracy. And then he said, even evil, that means even as far as doing evil things. He said, leave them alone, rejoice. Now when you do that, you are able to now hear his directive of what to do, which all that falls in the plan of forgiving your enemy. You cannot rejoice when the enemy has done all those things against you without the consciousness that that all that means you should forgive. So we will actually have to look at that in the next series of the Foundational Wisdom Block coming. Because all this shows, once you are rejoicing when people are doing all these things, you will be able to remain with the spirit of meekness, teachable as poor in spirit which you are blessed. You are mourning for the what they have done, but you do what Christ says, you will be comforted. So what they are doing will not now have any serious effect on you. You will stand. You will not be brought down. You are in situations which sounds like there is war. You should add more attention. You support to be for peace and not for war. He said you are a child of God. All that is under the fact that you can be rejoicing always when these things are done against you. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, dear people of God, fellow disciples of Christ, I think I have presented to us today by His grace the foundational wisdom block number one, which is rejoice always. Hallelujah. So that, that is exactly what Paul analyzed from what Christ said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6. Now let's get that first uh, chapter 5 and 16 read. It's a simple statement. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Hallelujah. So now, that's the foundational wisdom of number one, is to rejoice. Not only rejoice as Christ wants, it, that should be your lifestyle. So it's an instruction, it's a saying from the Lord of what he's asking us to do. Remember, Matthew 7, which is the place where we establish the fact of the foundational wisdom block. He said, anyone that hear this say and do, means he give instructions. And we are going to be looking at it in the analysis of the series from the chapter 5 until we get when he was making that conclusion in verse 24 of Matthew chapter 7 to pick out the various foundational wisdom block that we must take serious if we want to overcome all the wind and the challenges of life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I, I will now suppose 
Now, with this understanding, if you have any question, feel free to go ahead and indicate and ask your question. And by special grace, I will try to do justice to any explanation. On the subject in particular, but if there's some other thing that you have say concerning the knowledge of God from Christ to us that you want to have some clarification, you can ask. If time is there, we can answer that. If not, uh, as I say, we can focus more on this subject. Because remember, this is the, the area of the things about the life of the believer which are difficult to tread on. These instructions that Christ gave, that's why we hardly hear these things taught. Because they won't preach things like this. You, it's difficult for you to be preaching something that you know very well that you are not ready at the position to do. All this, every instruction he gave of what we should do, they are not what you can do by the strength of man. So I'm expecting, if you have any question, you can ask. Because some of you are actually aware that, but you have a situation you are not thinking, but you tell me that if somebody does this, I should just leave him go. Christ is not even just saying leave him go, he said rejoice. So somebody insults you. Ah, you just say, thank you, Father, for the insult. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Don't you know that even by that person himself, seeing you doing that, the devil around him will be embarrassed. And you may be surprised that he comes and starts begging and apologizing for what he did. That's why Christ says, bless. There's a whole lot of wisdom there. But if I suppose that there was any question, you can ask, I'm not seeing it so far whether there was any indication for somebody having a question. So I suppose that you are good students. You have learned. And uh, I give you again a few minutes. If somebody has a question to ask, you ask. If you don't have, I just pray finally and close to you. Hallelujah. I hope we have learned something. If you have learned something, say amen. Amen. If amen. you have not learned anything, amen. don't forget the foundational wisdom block number one. You are called to rejoice always. You see, from the spiritual side now, in the prophetic eyes that I'm seeing some things now, a lot of you that you are now listening to me, are, most of those problems that you are looking for the witch and wizard to kill, is this instruction that is your solution? Why? It is by doing what the Lord of the universe asks us to do that permit the spirit of that Lord to intervene on our behalf and fight our battles. And when the Holy Spirit is fighting for you, who is a witch or wizard? By the way, we can't even know who is even the one. All the effort of man trying to fight, challenge, argue left and right is just a waste of time. The summary is that what? It is not by strength shall man prevail. Forget about all the ability of what you have. You can never escape what Christ described there in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 and verse 25 of the wind, the flood, and the rain. I explain what that means. These are different categories of challenges. If you have small knowledge and ability in terms of your money, your sense, your technology, whatever, you can escape the challenge that is in the category of rain. You may not try the one in the category of flood. But if you try the one in the category of flood, that is all what the physical human ability can do. They can't try to overcome the one in the category of wind. Wind is invisible. Do you see wind when it's coming? So, in that case, we need the Father of all spirit to be the one fighting our battles. So, he will know if the wind that is coming is the one coming against you, he will know what to do to stop it even before takeoff. But that one who is the Father of spirit, the Holy Spirit, cannot fight for you if you are not respecting the sayings of the one he came to glorify with Jesus Christ. So when the Lord Jesus said rejoice, you must do the rejoicing when, when people are causing you trouble. If you can't express it for people, maybe you, you don't want them to feel it. That even in your heart, look somewhere and express it. You must do because faith must be responded by the physical action. That's why he said rejoice. 
He didn't say look rejoicing or look happy. If you like, you go to your dictionary and look for the meaning of the word rejoice. That's what Christ said we should do. And it's demanded to be done always. Now, in Paul speaking in that first Thessalonians chapter 5, from verse 16, he continued the next part of it. Verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. You see, you can't pray in the spirit, you can't pray in truth and in spirit if you are not rejoicing. And he said, When you pray in verse 17 without ceasing, then now he went to verse 18. He said, In everything give thanks. Now you cannot give thanks in everything if you are not rejoicing. Why? Because he said in everything, not for in that context is in. Why is it in? Means even if you will be in situations that are not pleasant, but you must give thanks because that's part of the rejoicing. So that rejoicing in verse 16 is part of the expression of the giving thanks in verse 18 of First Thessalonians. And then now verse 19 will tell you why you should do that. Because by doing that is the way to not vex the spirit, not grieve the spirit. By that means when you do that, the spirit of God moves into action on your behalf and begin to work to turn everything to your, for your good. Somebody say amen if you understand what I've said. Amen. Amen. So when we disobey to do that, which he has said, you are inviting the rain, the flood and the wind to bring you down. Christ said that's foolishness. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to pray to close you. Nobody indicates that has any question. So let us now pray. But I still give room. If somebody says have a question, you are free to indicate. And let's see. I've tried to put certain questions in what I've explained so that you should understand very well. Why would Christ tell me? People do me wrong, and yet I should rejoice. So, you see, now you can't even do that also if you don't meditate on these words that Christ said. That's the reason why it's even difficult for us to do this thing, because these teachings are not done. Right? We only have the teaching, you are blessed, prosperity, someone is going to give you money, 20 days are nonsense. The real foundational thing you first of all need to be able to withstand before start talking about the blessing is not taught. Because until you are hearing certain teachings over and over, you can't have the grace to do what is demanded of it. But now that you have heard, and I pray that even as you go back, read all those things that Christ has instructed from Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7. And every aspect of Christ's instruction in the Bible, if you want to escape the challenges of life. And it doesn't make sense in human terms, but that's the, it makes sense in Christ's terms. And he is the king who has the power because the spirit of all spirit works for him. He said he will glorify by him. No Holy Spirit will ever move on any situation. It doesn't matter the prayer point. If it, it's standing against any one instruction of Christ. Hallelujah. So I think we see, I just see somebody with an indication of a question. So you are free to ask a question. Go ahead. Remove your phone from. Uh, okay. He's already on mute. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Tell us uh, your name and from where you are. Uh, I'm Becky. I'm calling from the UK. Okay, okay, Sister Becky, you're welcome. Go ahead with your question. Thank you. So, uh, my question is sometimes um, you encounter people who have really severe depression, and um, sometimes it's so hard to reach them or just show them that rejoicing can actually be a, a way out but then depression can be it's an illness on its own where sometimes it's i don't know how to approach it in the sense where how do you um go about helping someone who's in that state of mind or someone who's just not medically depressed but just going through a depressive phase and how do you bring rejoicing without insulting or making them feel a bit like you don't understand their condition or you don't understand their um, um, state of health, mental health, shall I say? Okay, so if I understand that question clearly, you are acting in a situation where, because like what you have said is very true, even on medical reasons, with enough medical proof today in medical science, to the quarter of the problems or sicknesses are resolved uh, uh, is a result of depression. And all that part of it is this solution that Christ has just given. 
That's why the Bible has it very clear. When people are happy, by itself, it has already to heal many sicknesses. So a lot of issues of depression is based on this. And the answer is just there. But like what you are asking now is that if you find somebody, that means not you yourself, but somebody that is in the condition of this person, especially people who are working in the medical field, I'm sure this question is very, very important for you to take note. And now you know very well that even all that medication is not, is not going to change that situation. If you sense emotional uh, depression in them, it will only mean for them to change the emotional state. How are you going to help the person without the person feeling insulted? I hope that's your question. Or the person feeling insulted. Now, this is the point. Have you ever noticed easily that when you smile at somebody, the person starts smiling? Okay. Now, that what does that tell you? You can't give what you don't have. So, most times, don't even waste time to try to minister to help somebody to rejoice. When you already are not operating in that condition because there's nothing in you that will be used by the Spirit of God to impact that person. That state requires the Spirit of God to move in action. So what, first of all, must be done whenever you want to help somebody to obey or do anything about Christ, even getting people to believe in Christ, it needs wisdom to ask the Spirit of God. But for you to be able to ask the Spirit of God, you see, you must have this condition of mindset. You ask the Spirit of God, first pray for the person between your heart and God and ask the Lord what to do to help him or her. In that case, the directives of what you get there, when you go, the Spirit of God will move in action and the, the situation of that person will change. Because you are acting now by direction. But normally, generally, in human terms, when you see somebody sad, mad, you will try to see. So you, there's a part of the human wisdom there, but in most cases, I can assure you, the requirement of all what is responsible to all those depression are demonic depression. So if the approach of it ends only scientific or medical, it can still help. That's why sometimes in that case, while you are even trying to help the person not be sad or to look happy, not even you are not even going to tell him to rejoice. So. You are even just trying to get him change that mood. Some people may not start quarreling you like you said. And you are just saying this because you don't even really know what I'm passing through. You don't know, you see. So the point there is that because in that case, you are trying to do it from your human flesh. It is only some cases you can see people in the mood. That's why even you don't just say anybody, even if he doesn't have Christ, you just go and start saying, uh, are, are, you, do you want, are you ready to receive Jesus now? All those kind of things are what I call religious Christian radicalism. You have to go back. Christ says, go and pray to the Lord of the harvest to send. You have to first of all consult the Lord and pray for that person to the Lord and then ask him. So some cases you may see people under certain conditions, but your response to relate to help them may not be immediate because you need to first of all take the matter to the throne of God and get the feedback as a child of God because in some cases, you yourself, you are not in the spiritual state that rejoice always. So how is he going to give that? So by your prayer, the Holy Spirit may even conduct you yourself and start reminding you situation that you need to handle. By the time you are doing that, God cannot prepare you to send you. Now that's why I say pray for him to send laborers. Anytime you see somebody in need and you need God's help for that person, don't just go there. First thing Christ said, that's what he said, pray for the Lord of the harvest. That's an harvest. It means it needs God's intervention. When you pray, follow now the instruction of what He will be guiding you in your heart. Because in that case, when you go now, anything you meet, you will handle it because you are doing it for His name's sake. Then you would and like, because you are doing it for His name's sake, even if they insult you now, you will fall under this instruction of this foundational wisdom block. So what that happen? You also now go and start rejoicing. Because imagine, you now go and you are trying to help that person depressed to stop depressing. And then he now starts reacting against you and insulting you. And especially if he knows some, if he knows certain things about you, just imagine. And he go and start insulting about certain aspects of your life that has nothing to do with what now. You now also get more angrier. Or you get angry the more. Then now you have already now become into this instruction Christ has given in this foundational wisdom block to rejoice. Why maybe that person is reacting like that? You now start doing what Christ says. You now start rejoicing. 
Then the Holy Spirit now may use that your state of rejoicing now and make the person say, ah, but you are even insulting him or her. Don't you see how he's rejoicing? You may be surprised that that will now be the wisdom of what Christ, the Holy Spirit will use now to make that person now get free from that depression. But you see, if you cannot, first of all, <laughs> live in this rejoicing always, and you are going to do that, when you meet those bats, you must react in human form. And then by the time you know, the two of you are fighting. There are cases like that that happens. You want to help somebody and the person start reacting what you start hearing either physical assault or punching or insult, abuses left and right. But so you can never evangelize Christ with what you don't have. That's the reason why you see many people go in evangelism, they have problems with a lot of people. I hope I've tried to answer that question. Praise the Lord. You are blessed, Sister Becky. Hallelujah. There's another person. Who is that person? Ask, having a question to ask. Hi, this is Natalie. Natalie from California. Okay. So Go my question, question is, please. it's a question and it's also a testimony and an understanding. So a few months ago, someone emptied my tank of gas and pour water in the tank. And whilst I was driving, the vehicle began to convulse and just went crazy in the middle of the, uh, a four-way road. My reaction was just to begin to glorify God and thanking God for what was happening in the moment. So I'm just understanding now with the teaching today why my reaction was like that. Because at the time, it felt foolish. You're about to have an accident. It was a train reaction because a lot of people had to be trying to maneuver not to run in me. And I was just there glorifying God, thanking God, blessing God. And I thank you for this teaching today because it made me to understand why I reacted that way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So that's a good testimony there. And by itself, uh, we can see practicals in what Christ taught. Now, like now that you have understood, if you were even doing it before, you didn't understand. Now you understood. When that kind of thing happened, just activate yourself of that scripture that because of the instruction given by Christ, I have to do this. Ah, that one said, now will just get more mad because now you are having the conscience that you are doing this for Christ's sake. And anytime Satan is destabilized by being confused because... The reason why Satan is attacking is to get you be more on his car. His property is anger, angry, bitterness, hatred, unforgiveness. So the reason, is, okay, why is this Satan not coming as a spirit and slap you? Have you ever seen Satan come as a spirit and slap somebody? He has to use somebody's hand to slap you because by that doing, he knows that you will not be annoyed with that person. Then that state of your annoyance is what is not looking to destroy you and bring you down, like Christ said they will fall. So, with that truth of that testimony, is very, very powerful and inspiring to this teaching. I thank the Holy Spirit for, for helping our sister Natalie to bring that testimony. Now, listen. It means that anytime Christ says something, it is because, not because he is Christ that he said it, but it's because he's the truth. He came in the highest divine order, authority. Everything he said, I explained it to us the other time, it falls under truth to the full power. No other man in the Bible, no prophet, no apostle anywhere forever will ever say anything. If that person is the truth, he can never be true more than one power. But there's even none that is ever will call, will be ever called the truth. Only Christ was called the truth. Now that one they call the truth himself truth, if he says something, what is that thing he's saying means? Would that thing not be true to the power order? He says those things because he came from above. It, these are the universal principles. They, that means, uh, how do I say it? When a manufacturer manufactures a car, that, that car is supposed to use solar to power it, the engine. So you now take that car to go and go and, and find, you say no, I will not use solar. I will use something else. Will that car work? 
It will not work. Because the manufacturer, the law, the law, the law that manufactured that car came with that law of it being powered with solar. Are we understanding? Somebody say amen. The manufacturer of man is Jehovah God who manifested in the image of the embodiment of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. Everything he gave as written of the word of God right from the prophet, all is what he summarized it in the final wisdom. Now what he presented is, these are the laws that came with how he manufactured you. If you obey, you live well. You escape the wind and the God. You disobey, the other side must be the case. Just imagine that you were supposed to put gasoline in your tank of the car and you went and put water. You will receive what will come it after it. So that's how what Christ is teaching us is serious. And I, beyond this teaching that you are getting, because these are just Frank's aspect, I want you to have it in mind that every aspect of your focus of forget about this nonsense aspect of Christianity, of just thinking that the word of God is the word of God because it's anywhere in the Bible. You must be a master of Christ's teaching first before you even start thinking to use other aspects. Because any aspect of knowledge in the Bible you are using, if it contradicts what Christ says, and you do, because you don't know what Christ says, how would you know whether it contradicts it? If it contradicts what Christ says, the Holy Spirit cannot move on that issue. But these two are there. So why is it that it must be so? Because it is when we obey Christ, the Holy Spirit moves. And that's all what we need. When the Spirit of God is fighting for you, nothing can be against you and prevail. All situations working against you must turn around for your good. Hallelujah. So that's why Christ says, the aspect of that has to do with us. When you are rejoicing, you are able to be thanking God. You are able to be maintaining the state of pure heart. You are able to maintain the state of teachableness. And anytime even God wants to come and teach you something through somebody, you'll be able to listen. And that may just be the, the formula you are looking for to come out of that problem. Now, let me end by saying this to us as I pray to release you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything Amen. in this physical life like this, in the physical existence, it must pass through someone. Someone must be involved. Satan has to use people to attack you. God also will use people to... The problem is that spiritual blindness makes us sometimes... We don't see the people God is sending to use for us. We either see the one Satan sent. But the picture here is the fact that the reason why Christ told us all these things on how we relate with man is because even if Satan used people against you and you do what Christ is, you are have to be pure. And then now you can easily get clear directives from the Spirit of Christ to know what to do and come out of it. And sometimes to get a certain breakthrough, it's a principle. There's a particular, maybe an instruction just telling you, go here. Just imagine you may be having money now to buy land. And somebody wants to sell a land somewhere where under that soil, like, like in America where the, the land law is individual that has what is there. Under that soil or any part, many parts of the world, under that soil there's a lot of minerals. You have the money. And you want to buy hands square. Now, that person who wants to sell it, he doesn't know that there are minerals there. But do you imagine that, do you think the Holy Spirit knows? Of course, the Holy Spirit knows. So if the Lord wants to make you be wealthy by that picture, he cannot direct you to discover that man and buy that land from him. Maybe he may even make you buy it cheaper. But just imagine this time that God is preparing to give you that information. That's when somebody came and slapped you. <laughs> and then you do the normal reaction. You do not do what Christ says. Your heart is now darkened. You cannot hear again. That information that was there as God's standing after you have prayed, looking for wealth, praying all this prayer, it has become close. You missed it at that moment. Maybe by the time some days have passed, you have counseling men of God, pastors, and you now put your hand back. That information, somebody already has discovered and bought that land. You have missed it. By one disobedience of what Christ instructed somewhere. 
this is the reason why many of us Christians are not benefiting a lot from what we are supposed to benefit by our redemptive blessings by being in Christ. So, my prayer and the prayer you should pray and continue to pray. Holy Father, help me and grant me the grace to obey every instruction of Christ. That is the prayer you should pray and be praying always. It's not easy to obey divine instruction. Because all the gimmick manipulation will still come there for the devil to make sure you don't obey it. Satan doesn't have too much problem to attack people. He, all those things about witches and no, it's his main target is to make sure they don't obey the instruction of the king, Christ. Because he knows that what the manufacturer pro, the law for our success is obeying the instruction that the manufacturer made us with. So Satan knows that if you don't obey this one, he will prepare to tell you to obey all other things. Even the ones that are close in religious terms in the Bible by Moses, by Elijah, by this, as far as those ones are not in agreement with what Christ is. Because there are so many things that any other person, no matter what he says, there are certain limitations of some things. It's only Christ that has the perfect truth because himself is the truth. So I pray, and even as I release you, I pray that you will continue this prayer for the grace of God to be obedient to do every instruction or saying of Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray from today the grace to become truly a disciple or a student of Christ. Taking serious to study and become a master of at least what he has established for us in the Bible. Let that grace to be a recommitted student of the teachings of Christ. So that you can now have a mastery of his sayings and have the ability to do them. Receive that grace as a student of Christ. Committed student of Christ. Receive the grace now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pray that even from today, the mercies of God will show you mercy in all that you have disobeyed concerning Christ, especially the ones you knew. The ones the Holy Spirit gave you witness in your heart, but yet you still disobey. I pray the mercies of God will grant you mercy. But as he said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. That means even when the mercy is to come to you and you are not shown mercy, and you are holding people grudge and bitterness, it will resist. May the Lord by his mercy help you if there is any bitterness or any hatred or grudge from your heart. Ask the Lord to forgive you. And ask the Lord to forgive those people, whoever you know that they did you want. So that you will obtain the message of God as well for the things you did wrong before God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You see, most times, us human beings will justify, oh, I am better, I'm perfect, and this. If the Lord Jesus could bring the open everybody's heart and put it in the public, some of us will be shocked with some people we thought that they are very, very holy and righteous. That's why the condition to escape the wind and the flood or satanic, all those things is to constantly do what Christ says so that you constantly receive his mercy. Your self-righteousness cannot help us. Hallelujah. So my prayer is that is why I say, blessed are the poor in spirit. Always see yourself in that teachable state. Acknowledge that you need the Spirit of God to help you. Don't claim to know already too much. Because anybody who knows too much cannot still exist on earth. If you already know to the final, the reason you are still living is because you still have to learn from the Master through every channel. May the Spirit of teachableness come upon you even now. For those of you who receive it even the first time, and those of you who have it, may it continue to overflow in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I release you today with the peace of Christ that carries all the eternal blessings of the Almighty Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord.